Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be talking about all day sits and some of the things that you guys need to consider before going out on an all day sit this season. We did touch on all day sits a little bit in our early November hunting strategies video. And if you missed that, I will link it above. But in this video, I kind of wanted to dive a little bit more in detail, not only on the hunting strategy, but also talk about some of the things that are gonna help you make it the entire day in the woods. So first, let's kind of talk about the hunting approach to an all day sit. Most of my all day sits are taking place during the rut, and the rut is an awesome time to be sitting in the woods as much as you can. We said it in our previous video, and I'll say it again, there are a lot of old bucks that get shot every single year from 10 in the morning until two in the afternoon. And so again, if you're back at camp, if you're back at the car, you're missing out on an opportunity at one of those older bucks in the area. You really have no idea when those bucks are gonna be done breeding a doe and start searching for the next one. So you need to be in the woods as much as you can to take advantage of these opportunities. And when it comes to all day sits, your stand locations are very important. Now notice stand locations, plural. We're not sitting in the same stand all day. Now typically in the morning, we're focusing more on these bedding locations. As these deer are coming off the fields or off your food plots or, or wherever they were feeding at night, they're gonna filter back into those bedding locations and they're gonna bring the bucks with them. And so if you're able to slip in there well before daylight and sit on the downwind side of those bedding areas, you have a great opportunity of seeing a lot of deer movement within the bedding area and around the bedding area. And sitting in these bedding areas is really a pretty good spot to sit throughout most of the day. That's where a lot of these deer are gonna be hanging out for most of the day, especially if these bucks are tending does, they're gonna to wanna to keep them in the thick cover as long as possible. However, when a buck is done breeding a doe, if there's no other hot does in the area, he's gonna leave and he's gonna start looking for that next estrus doe. And so this is where sometimes changing your location around midday can help increase your odds. If I'm doing an all day sit and I'm in or near one of these bedding locations in the morning and I haven't seen much activity, I might opt to change stand locations around 11 in the morning and move to a known funnel in between two bedding locations. Because what these bucks are gonna be doing is they're gonna be going from bedding area to bedding area. And if there's a known funnel in between the two, there's a pretty good chance that those bucks are gonna walk by. And for those of you guys that don't know what a funnel is, it's basically an area that consolidates deer movement. And this could be from a variety of reasons. It could be that the cover is pinching down in that location. It could be that there's a pond on one side. Maybe the deer are working their way through a draw. Maybe there's a huge blowover that's kind of directing deer traffic around it. You know, there could be a variety of reasons, but basically it's an area where the deer movement gets pushed down to a smaller area. And so if you can find one of those, especially if it's located in between two known bedding areas, you have a really good chance of seeing a majority of the deer movement as they move from one bedding area to the other bedding area. And if I am doing an all day sit and sitting three separate stand locations, I'm normally sitting that funnel in between bedding locations in the middle of the day, and I'm getting down around two o'clock to move to a stand that's closer to their destination food source. And not only will changing your stand locations throughout the day increase your chances of seeing deer, it also helps you reset mentally. And anyone that's ever done an all day sit before knows that it's just as much mental as it is physical. So if you're sitting somewhere and you're not seeing a lot of activity, you're not really feeling it, it's okay to get down and change locations. Just make sure you're staying in the woods. So to kind of recap, again, we're focusing on bedding in the morning, food in the afternoon. If you do want to change locations three times, we're trying to find some sort of a funnel in between two known bedding locations and try to catch these bucks moving from bedding area to bedding area. But now let's actually get into some of the things that are going to help you stay in the woods longer. And honestly, this might be just as important as the hunting strategy. And the first thing I want to touch on in terms of you being able to stay out all day is your ability to stay warm. Most of the all day sits we're doing are during the rut, early to mid November. So there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be really cold. And if you can't stay warm, the chances that you're going to make it on your all day sit are very low. So do everything that you can to stay warm and stay warm as long as possible. Do everything you can to layer up. And if you guys do have a long walk to your stand, let's say you're walking a half mile, a mile or more to your stand, if you can carry your outer layer with you and then put it on at the base of your tree. What this is gonna do, it's gonna help reduce the amount you sweat on the way into your stand. Because if you sweat a ton on the way to your stand, you're just gonna get colder a lot faster. So in order to reduce the amount of sweat, if you do have a long walk, I would just carry your outer layer with you. And once you get to the stand, put it on at the base of the tree. Another thing that you guys need to load up on to stay warm are hand warmers, foot warmers, and body warmers. These things are lifesavers. If I know that I'm going on an all day sit, I'll have two mega hand warmers, one in each hand. I wear four foot warmers, two per foot, one on the bottom side of my toes, one on the top side of my toes. And I'm also wearing a body warmer. I put one on my chest and I put one on my back. And this really helps me stay warm. And a lot of times you really only need to make it till about noon because once that sun comes up 
and that starts hitting you, that actually warms you up more than you think. So again, layer up, dress as warm as possible, and don't forget those warmers. The next thing that you need to remember to bring on an all day sit is not as important as staying warm, but it's very close. And that's bringing something to eat and bringing something to drink. So the obvious reason you're bringing something to eat and drink is because, well, you're gonna get hungry during the day. And believe it or not, this could be a factor that drives you out of your stand. If you are hungry, your body doesn't have any fuel, and without fuel, you have a harder time staying warm. And that just could be one more thing that drives you to get down. And so we just covered the obvious reasons on why you're bringing something to eat and something to drink with you. But another reason why you're bringing it with you is to fight off boredom. Anyone that's done an all day sit can tell you they're not super exciting, but you need to be in the woods. And if you're starting to get bored, but you know within the next half hour you get to crack open a candy bar or have a sandwich, that might be enough just to get you to that next hour. And that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to that next hour and then that next hour. We're trying to stay in the woods as long as possible. And bringing enough food and enough snacks is just one more way to fight off the boredom to stay alert. One thing that I make sure to do when I am bringing my own food is I'm repackaging it. So if I go to the store to grab a bunch of iced teas to bring in the stand with me, and if I haven't made sandwiches myself, I will probably buy a couple sandwiches from the deli. But the packaging that comes with the pre-made sandwiches, it's very crinkly and it makes a very loud noise. So if you're doing something similar, what you wanna make sure to do is take the candy bars out, take those pre-packaged sandwiches out, and you're putting them in your own sandwich bags. Those little sandwich bags that you make your kids lunch with, those are gonna be much quieter than any packaging that comes from the store. And along the same lines of making sure that you're dressing warm enough and making sure that you're bringing something to eat, you also need to make sure that the stand or blind that you're sitting in is very comfortable. If you're trying to make it all day sitting on a little tiny seat or maybe the tree that you're sitting in is slightly leaning forward and you have to sit like this all day, you know, that's not gonna be very comfortable. And once your butt or your back starts to ache, that's gonna be the beginning of the end of your all day sit. And guys, there's plenty of great stands out there that are really comfortable. Just make sure that if you're planning an all day sit, that you're sitting in one. So to wrap things up here, I'll kind of talk about a few bonus items that are either in my backpack or on my person. Um, and some of these are gonna be obvious, some of these maybe won't be. Uh, the, the first thing is, is my grunt call. That's normally around my neck, hanging inside my jacket so I can get to it really quickly if I need to use it. Um, I'm also bringing extra hand warmers, so not only do I have them in my gloves, I have a few more in my backpack just in case I start getting a little chilly. And one more thing I make sure to bring with me on my all day sits is an external battery charger or a power bank. And this is just so that I can charge my phone during the all day sits. And I, I know that bringing a phone with you or using your phone in the woods is kind of like a, a controversial topic. Um, and, and I'm not saying you should be on your phone when you're hunting. You really need to be paying attention to what's going on because this stuff happens so fast. So you want to be paying attention but I have an older phone and during these really cold days, my battery dies really fast and I wanna be able to communicate with the other hunters that are hunting on the same property as me. We really like to talk to each other and let one another know where these deer are moving to and from. So having a charged phone for me really helps. If, if my dad tells me that the buck is coming, that's just one more thing that tips the odds in my favor. So, so I really need to make sure that my phone is charged. And so right around the middle of the day, a lot of times it starts to get low on batteries. And so I will just plug it into this power bank and then within an hour it's fully charged again and I'm ready to go. But that pretty much covers it for all day sits. Again, we don't really try to overcomplicate it. If you guys have any strategies that you like to implement, or if you have any questions about all day sits, please drop your comments and questions in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.